Hi guys, I am back for another video. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you're back, thank you so much for joining us again. We are so glad to have you. My name is Kelly Floyd and I am a speech language pathologist with Bright Start. And as always, I'm gonna encourage you to like, follow and subscribe on your favorite social media platform um, on our YouTube channel so that you make sure that you get notifications when we get new content out. If you haven't, um, seen our previous videos, please go back and watch them. We've shared lots of tips and lots of information with you all, and hopefully you will find that helpful. Um, if this isn't your first time, I really am so thankful and honored that you've come back. Um, we love people to find value in what we do, and I'm glad that you're finding value and continuing to watch. And if there are things that we haven't covered yet, and you want to know more about that thing, please drop us a question, a comment, let us know what it is that you want more of so that we can give you the content that serves you the best, because that is ultimately what we want to do. We want to be able to provide you the best value that we can provide. So today we are going to talk about what your child enjoys. So a few sessions ago, I talked about observing your child and beginning to understand what it is that they enjoy and what motivates them and what they love. And today we're going to talk about what are some of the things that your child might be interested in. And I'm going to give some examples of some ways that you can utilize those things for moving your language forward. So I am going to first and foremost tell you that this might be a time that you have to think outside the box, because if you observe your child and you find that they just love to be outside, then you're going to have to think out of the box, perhaps, to think about how you might use the outside to further your speech and language development. Um, a little spoiler, outside is a really easy one, and it's actually not too hard to think outside the box, but we'll get to that in a second. But maybe you found that your child is a really just loves vacuum cleaners. Well, you might have to think outside the box for that because that's not something that you would typically think that maybe your child would enjoy. Maybe you found that your kiddo is a truck kid. They love trucks. They want to do trucks all day, every day. And that's all that they want to do. And that is, that's where their interest is. Well, you might feel pretty comfortable at first, but you might soon get bored and think this can't be all there is. How can I utilize trucks? to really expand their language beyond this one way of playing. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that today. So you have observed your child. You have found what they are interested in. You have found what brings the light to their eyes, what captures their attention. And now what do you do with it? Well, let's pretend that they like to be outside. Your child is the most aware, the most talkative and the most engaged and interactive outside. I'm going to tell you that one of my favorite activities is to go on a walk. Now, I use the term walk very loosely. You aren't going to be getting any cardiovascular workout on a walk with a toddler. <laughs> you actually might not even go very far. And the reason is, is because you're going to stop and you're going to look at it and you're going to examine and you're going to talk about almost everything you see. So just prepare yourself before you go on this walk that it might not be a very long walk and it's gonna be a very slow walk. And you might go forward five steps and backwards six steps because they might find something that they wanna go back to that they were very interested in. But just like we did when we first started observing our child to figure out what it is they were interested in, we're gonna do the same thing on our walk. We're gonna see what lights them up. What are they interested in? And we're gonna follow their lead. So if they're a kiddo, that wants to examine all the plant life along the walk, begin to think about how you can talk about those plants. So maybe you don't know the names of plants. I don't know all the names of plants, but I know flowers and I know leaves and I know what they look like and what they feel like. And so I can talk about that. We can talk about, oh, that is a very smooth leaf. Oh, that one is very green. Look, these leaves are changing colors. Oh, this one is crunchy. We're crunching through the leaves. You might find beautiful flowers. Well, you can talk about the colors of the flowers. You can talk about the way the flowers smell. You might even see some bees coming to the flowers. If you're lucky, you can talk about the bees that are coming to the flowers and they're landing on the flowers and then they're flying away from the flowers. You can talk about how things feel. Maybe it feels spiky or maybe it feels bumpy or maybe it feels rough. There are all kinds of 
descriptive words that you can use. You can talk about the way the weather feels. Ooh, it's cold out today. Oh, it looks like it's cloudy. It might rain. It's getting dark. There's all kinds of things that you can begin to talk about in that way. Maybe your little one isn't interested in the plants and the flowers and the weather. Maybe they're interested in the things that they see in the yards. <laughs> of your neighbors, right? Maybe they want to go up and look at that frog that happens to be in your neighbor's garden. As long as you feel like your neighbor would be okay with that, allow them to explore and check that out and talk about what that is and what it might do and what it looks like, maybe how it feels. And you can see how this theme of really exploring with words, the things that you're seeing, as well as the senses. So you're going to pair the words with the senses can really be very fun and very language rich. So I love when a kiddo thinks outside is the best place to be because there's so much language, it's endless. There is endless language to be had outside, whether you stay in your yard, whether you take a walk, whether you explore even a parking lot while you're waiting on a sibling who's in a sport or to get out of school. There are so many ways that you can utilize outside just begin to use your senses. What do you see? What do you feel? What do you smell? And then really get down and explore and look at it and talk about it with your child. Maybe even encourage them to collect some things so that you can look at it later and review it later. Okay. So maybe your child likes outside. Maybe your child is interested in trucks like we talked about earlier and you are really tired of playing trucks the same way every time. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's the good news. You don't have to play trucks the same way every time. Did you know that you can bring trucks to different places and have trucks do the same things that you maybe would play with baby dolls with? You can have your truck go to sleep. You can have your truck pretend to eat. You can bring your truck to the table if you're adventurous and you don't mind a distraction at a meal. You can wash your trucks. You can dry your trucks and you can make your trucks go up, 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 up in a mountain and down, 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 down the hill and they can fall over and go, oh no. Trucks can do lots and lots and lots and lots of things. So if you have a kiddo that loves trucks, maybe all they're interested in is even lining the trucks up. Maybe you could get them to put them in a line and then push them over a cliff, i.e. The, the couch, push them off the couch or off the arm of the couch. It really doesn't have to be terribly involved or you don't have to think really hard because there's lots of language that can be had with that so maybe they've lined them up and we've counted them and we've said what colors they are and we said who's first in line who's second in line who's last in line maybe we've done all the things that we can see well maybe then we line those trucks up or maybe you begin to model lining those trucks up and then pushing them off oh no they fell where did they go? Oh, that one went under the couch. Oh, that one went over beside the table. Oh no, that one flipped upside down. There's so many ways that you can then use language with that. Maybe you're really done with that and you want to put them through a car wash, right? Okay, well, we can then put the trucks in the water. We can swish them around. We can rub them. We can take them out of the water. We can dry them off. We can see how clean they are. Again, that's all with with your trucks. Maybe the trucks have had a really hard day and you want to put them to sleep and they need to go, they need to go to sleep. They've had a tough day. You can tuck your trucks in. You can make a bed for your trucks. You can cover your trucks up. They can pretend to snore. And then you can say, oh, trucks, good morning. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Maybe you could even put a song with it. Rise and shine. And you can just make it a fun activity. Guys, I just want to tell you all, that if your child is interested in something, observe them with that thing and then think, how can I expand that? How can I add to that? How can I put more language with this activity? How can I make it more fun? How can I generalize it? How can I take it to different places? And it might open your world up to see that thing that you think is like the one thing that they are fascinated with and stuck on in a whole new light when you begin to think about how else it can be used and played with other than the one way that they maybe are playing with it now. I hope that's been helpful and I hope you guys come back next time and join us for more tips. Take care. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe.